Amen. We welcome our friends online. We also have an international online audience. And so this morning, we want to also turn our attention to our international uh, online audience. And we welcome you this morning on this Sunday before Christmas. Amen. I'm excited. This is one of the times that my juice gets pumping. And, uh, you know, I'm getting excited because I know the reason why Christ is born. Amen. I know the reason. I know you know the reason. Amen. Praise God. So this morning, amen, I just want to share with you a little bit from the word of God this morning and to just to encourage your heart. And after that, we're going to worship God in our giving and then we're going to just have a little time of fellowship together. Can we bow our hearts this morning as we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you, God, for your loving kindness and your tender grace. And Lord, at this Christmas season, when some hearts might be heavy, Lord, Lord, at this Christmas season, when some might be sad, some might be sick, lying on a bed of affliction, oh God, we pray this morning that you will lift our hearts and lift our souls, and God, that together we will have a blessed Christmas because we know the reason, Lord, why Christmas is because our Savior is born. So God, we give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, I would just want to encourage you a little bit from the word of God this morning. Praise on the best, the, the, the gift. Amen. Amen. The, 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 the gift, uh, you know, that I'm thinking about the first gift that I got. And I remember as a kid, the first gift that I got was a fire truck. Amen. It was a fire truck for my parents and I remember that my dad was there we were having fun and he was running behind my mom squirting the little water from the little fire truck and it was just fun after then uh, you know then gifts were were sometimes rare amen but I know Christmas we all look forward for something even though some of the people say, I don't want anything for Christmas that's all right now you don't have to some people deep down in their hearts, you know they want something. Amen. Look at somebody and say, they know they want something. Amen. They know they want something. Amen. So we need to understand this morning that Christmas is more than, let me clear it, it's not about Santa Claus. We know the world has created Santa Claus. But the reason for Christmas is that the Savior is born. The reason for Christmas is that our Heavenly Father has given us the best gift that you and I can ever have. And this morning, I want to share with you on the subject, the greatest gift of all. The greatest gift of all. You know, um, during the season, um, as a church, we have been um, sharing out a lot of gifts, not only here in the Nellin, and it was so awesome to see the smiles. What blesses me so much is the smiles of the kids' faces as they receive, you know. There was this one little girl, and, you know, she was looking through all the gifts, and it seemed like she could not find anything, anything that she liked, anything that, you know, that connected her. And then something strike in my mind, and I remember I am seeing among some other gifts we had, this nice, uh, uh, it, it was a nice dollhouse. And so I was like, you know, I think this is going to make the day. So I quickly ran out and I ran to the room and I got this dollhouse and I brought it back to her and I, showed, I said, I'm sure you like this. Oh, her face lit up. It seemed like that is the only thing that she wanted, you know. And I, that made my, that's one of the, the, the experiences that we had yesterday that made my day. Amen. To see, you know, just the smiles. And as a church this year, we venture out not only here in the United States, but also around the world to give at least 4,000 gifts. And I think we surpassed that. Amen. And we are not saying that to both. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Of the power. We're not saying that to both because that's the least. Amen. We're saying that, amen, that is a way that we show the love of God. To see the smiles on the faces of God's children. You know, when uh, brother and sister go to the shelter and they deliver dinner because 
we cannot go there because of COVID and have fellowship and sing for them. So all we can do is to deliver dinner. But they're so much appreciative of what we have done. But I want to let you know that none of those gifts that people will receive this Christmas will ever beat God's gift. The greatest gift of all. And that greatest gift of all is not found under a tree. That greatest gift of all is not wrapped in a package. That greatest gift of all is not bound with ribbon. But that greatest gift of all came from heaven. Amen. The songwriter says, he came from heaven to earth uh, to show us the way. And from the earth to the grave, uh, to the cross he laid. Uh, and from the cross to the grave. Amen. And from the grave back to the sky. Hallelujah. Lord, I lift your name up on I. When God was thinking about us, amen, of all the gifts that he gives to us today, Jesus is the greatest gift the Lord can ever give us. Give God some praise this morning. So when we think about God's gift to us, the prophet Isaiah, in, in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 6, he said these words. He says, for to us a child is given. Sorry, child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulder. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Hallelujah. The Bible described this gift to us. The Bible says when we are confused, when we are perplexed, when we do not know what to do, when we are running back and forth, the Bible called this greatest gift of all Wonderful Counselor. Hallelujah. If you need some advice, you can go to this counselor. If you need, hallelujah, to be uplifted uh, in your spirit, uh, you can go to that counselor. Amen. If you need someone to turn your life around, you and I can go to this counselor. Amen. He is called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank God for this wonderful counselor. We thank God that he is there to counsel us when we are confused, he is there to comfort us when we do not know what to do. When we become hopeless, uh, he is by us. And may I tell you, this wonderful counselor is free. Some counselors are $75 per hour and more. But this wonderful counselor, the greatest gift of all that God has given unto us, the Bible says he is free. In John chapter 3 and verse Number 16, the golden verse. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Can you imagine? The Lord looked to heaven and he wanted to give us a gift because God gives us many gifts. For some of us, he gave us the air that we breathe. For some of us, he gave us wonderful families that we have. For some of us, he gave us a great job. For some of us, he gave us peace. For some of us, he healed our bodies. For some of us, he provided a job. For some of us, when we were down in the dumps, he picked us up and he washes us and he makes us clean. For some of us, oh, thank God, he has been a friend that stick it closer than a brother. And when God was looking for a gift, of all the gifts that he has given unto us, and we can never take anything for granted, the best gift of all that he has given us, the greatest gift of all, is the gift that he gave on the first Christmas, and that is Jesus. Hallelujah. The angel, the songwriter says, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is is king the bible not us call him the king but the bible call him the king of kings and the lord of lords the bible says hallelujah the ceos and presidents and prime ministers will one day bow down to this wonderful counselor oh thank you jesus so isaiah said he's wonderful counselor he is the mighty god 
He's not just God. I've traveled a little bit, Wendell and I. We have traveled through many countries, Europe, Asia, and so on. We have seen all kinds of gods. But I tell you something that none can match our God, our Heavenly Father. None can match our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible call him a mighty God. In creation, when there was chaos and confusion, he said, let there be light. And there was light. Oh, praise God. When Moses uh, and Israel was hemmed in at the Red Sea and there was the, the mountains on one side and, and there was the wilderness on one side uh, and the Egyptian army was coming to take them back uh, into captivity. Hallelujah. And the forming Red Sea was in front of them. Uh, the Lord God Almighty proved himself to be a mighty God uh, for he parted the waters uh, and not only he parted the waters uh, but he built uh, a highway through the sea. Amen. Not only he built a highway through the sea but he took the same water that was a threat uh, to the nation of Israel uh, and he formed the wall uh, of protection isn't he mighty this morning uh, hallelujah that this almighty God can take the difficulties uh, of our lives uh, and turn it around for our good and for his glory give God some praise hallelujah praise God hallelujah oh thank you Jesus so Isaiah called him a mighty God Hallelujah. Blind Bartimaeus who was blind and could not see sitting by the roadside. No one cares. They just drop him off there for the day so that he can beg. But one day he heard that this mighty God was passing and his name was Jesus. Oh, thank God. And the Bible says uh, that blind Bartimaeus cried out, uh, Hallelujah, Jesus, uh, thou son of God, uh, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus said, bring him to me. And the man that was once blind uh, by the touch uh, of the love of God uh, saw and he followed Jesus. Well, how do we prove that he's the mighty God? How does he prove that he's the mighty God? Well, then guess what? The Bible says, at the resurrection, they mocked him. At the resurrection, oh yes, they scuffed him. As the resurrection, they call him all kind of of names uh, as the resurrection uh, oh yes uh, they insulted him uh, yes they put him on a cross uh, and they nailed him to a cross uh, they pierced him in the side uh, and then they placed him in the tomb but that uh, was not the end uh, of the story uh, the bible says uh, on the third day uh, this mighty god hallelujah who told uh, the men of his time he says uh, destroy this temple uh, and i will raise it up uh, in three days as he was in the grave the devil laughed the devil scuffed the devil thought that he had him but in the name of Jesus on the third day hallelujah the Bible said this mighty God not with the help of men arose triumphantly from the grave oh thank you Jesus I think we got some excitement over there amen hallelujah and that is the kind of God I want to serve that is the mighty God I want to serve today. A God that is greater than unemployment. A God that is greater than COVID. A God that is greater than cancer. A God that is greater than depression. A God that is greater than everything. That's the kind of God I want to serve. So Isaiah called this gift to us. Wonderful counselor, mighty God. He says, he's the everlasting father. Oh, he's the everlasting father. That means he would be all the way with us. The psalmist David says, the psalmist David says, Yedo in Psalms 23, he says, Yedo, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Hallelujah. Quoting from the Lord's is my shepherd. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. Oh, David says, they comfort me. And thou preparest the table before me. David knew high and David knew lower. David knew difficult days uh, and he knew challenging days. But this mighty God, uh, hallelujah, this everlasting father was with him. And that's why I am encouraged 
I am encouraged. I am encouraged this morning just to know that in these difficult days, in these challenging days, the everlasting Father is with us. Aren't you glad this morning? I am glad to know that even if someone is on a respirator, even if someone was told, uh, yes, they were told uh, by the doctors, I cannot do anything more for you, uh, that mighty God uh, is there with us. Somebody say praise God. So Isaiah called him the everlasting father. And then the, by Isaiah called him the prince of peace. The world is looking for peace. The United Nation is trying all in its power, in its power, to bring peace to this world. But there will be no priests until the Prince of Peace comes on the scene. And the Prince of Peace, give God some praise. This world, our community, our homes, our marriages will know no peace until the Prince of Peace take control. And when he comes into our hearts, Oh, what a joy. I don't know about you, but I was out there, I was lost in sin. But the day I gave my heart to Jesus, it was the day of the beginning of God's peace in my life. And today the storms still rage. The winds still blow. Oh, glory to God. The problems still come, but I know where my faith is. Amen. I am anchored uh, to the rock of all ages. Uh, hallelujah. He's a shelter in the time of storm. But what gift does he bring quickly? He brings the gift of salvation. What is salvation? Salvation is simply the forgiveness of sins. Huh. And an established relationship with God. What did Jesus brought on Christmas? Yes, we know it's all about him. And giving him the gift. But Christmas is about him bringing to us salvation. Oh yes, he brought to us. Uh, it doesn't matter who we are. The Bible says, Paul speaking to the Roman Christian. He says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. But the coming of Jesus. The coming of Jesus brought salvation to mankind. I'm not talking about a religious connection. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about us connecting back to God by first repenting of our sins and accepting Christ as our Savior. The second thing that Christmas brings, this gift brings, this brings brought, as I said earlier, it brought peace. When the angels came to the shepherd, they said, peace on earth. And goodwill to men. Our country will not know peace until Jesus reigns in our hearts individually. We will try all kind of discussion and everything, but we will not know genuine peace until we embrace Jesus. Also, that gift is the gift of hope. Today, we live in a hopeless world. We live in a world where people are just fed up. I, you know, I was just talking to someone today and they said, you know, uh, you know I, I, I nearly commit suicide. People, you know, do not have answers. They, cannot, they do not know where to go for the answers to their problems. But the answer to our problem is not found in the liquor bottle. It's not found at the end of a cigarette. It is not found in a club. The answer to our problem is not found in our universities. It's not found, uh, hallelujah, in our legislative office. Uh, the, the, the answer to our problem is found in the greatest gift of all, and that is Jesus. Hallelujah. The songwriter says, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. Uh, I go to the mountain, uh, to the mountain, stand by me. And when the earth all around me is like sinking sand, who? On Jesus Christ, the solid rock I stand. And when I need a shelter, and when I need a friend, where do we go? We go to the rock. Amen? That gift also brings healing. If you are sick here this morning, Mentally sick, emotionally sick, physically sick, financially sick, relationally sick. Amen. The greatest gift of all can fill your heart. Fifthly, that greatest gift brings joy. You know, today many people are going to be happy for just a little time. When they get a gift. Whether it's a, a new gift or a re-gift. 
Uh, I know some people looking right now. I said, I ain't got all that money. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do some regifting. Uh, well, it's just calculated wisdom, right? <laughs> if you don't need it, somebody else can enjoy it. Give it to them. Amen? And make sure it's of good quality. But it's going to be a whole lot of happiness because some people's happiness and, and, and their well-being depends. It depends on external circumstances. That means that if they get a new car, they're happy. If they get a new job, they're happy. If they get a new suit clothing, oh, they're off the wall. If they get a new man or woman in their life, oh boy, they're happy. But when everything gets stale, as my mom would say, then there goes the happiness. But there's something that the gift of Christmas gives. And that gift, it gives not just happiness, it gives not just happiness, but he gives joy. Amen. He gives joy. Hey, somebody say joy. He gives joy. And joy is not dependent on our outward circumstances. Joy is not dependent whether we get a new car, a new house, uh, you know, a, a, a raise on the job. Joy is dependent uh, on our relationship with God. You might get up uh, and you might be broke, uh, but guess what happened? It would not wipe the smile off of our face. But what can we give? I want to wrap up this this morning. What gift can you and I give to this greatest gift of all? Well, we can give the gift of commitment. Commitment of our lives to him. The Bible says, hallelujah, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, this is more than just going to church. This is more than just doing a little bit of religious duty now and then or crossing the whole lady. This is us, hallelujah, committing our entire life to the Lord. Amen. Saying, God, I will serve you all the days of my life. God, I will live for you all the days of my life. Come hell or high water, God, I am going to commit my entire life to you. The gift of commitment is the gift of committing to pray to him, pray to Jesus every day. You know, we talk to a lot of people. We talk to people on the phone. Oh, man, some of us, we spend hours. We spend hours texting, hours talking. But have you ever considered spending a little bit more time talking to the greatest gift of all, Jesus? Hallelujah. The hymn writer says, the hymn writer says, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, one of the greatest acts you and I can ever do is to speak with Jesus. The old saints used to say, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him about all your struggles. <laughs> he would answer by and by. Oh, praise God. The greatest gift that you and I can give uh, Jesus this Christmas season is the gift of reading his word. The psalmist David says, thy word have I hid in my heart. That I will not sin against thee. There's something about this word. The words that are found in the Bible, it never fails. There's something about the promises of God. It will always work for us if we trust it. You know, the psalmist David says, in, 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 sorry, the wise man Solomon said in Proverbs 3, verse 5, and says, He says, Trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path. The gift you and I can give is the gift of just serving God. We serve a lot of people today. You and I, we serve a lot of people. Some of us, we serve people in our jobs. We serve people, you know, in our families. But the best person you and I can ever serve is Jesus. And this Christmas season, as you and I are going to receive a whole lot of different gifts, let us be reminded that God has taken time out, time out to give us the greatest gift of all, and that is Jesus. Amen. The wise men came, they brought gold, they brought frankincense, they brought myrrh. But God Almighty looked down and he gave that little baby born in the manger the greatest gift of all. Amen. His only begotten son. May we receive him this Christmas. 
and may his joy fill our hearts. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning. We thank you, O God, this morning for the greatest gift of all. That is Jesus. Lord, many times as the world, we look for external satisfaction. But there can be no peace, there can be no satisfaction. Whatever we are busy doing, whatever we have received tangibly, Lord, but the only satisfaction and peace and joy we can have is when we receive the greatest gift of all, your Son, Jesus Christ. So this time, O oh God, as we bow, like the angels, like the shepherds, like the wise men, as we bow this morning before the babe of Bethlehem, who is now a mighty God, who is now the lion of the tribe of Judah, we pray this morning that his joy will fill our hearts. And where there is sadness, Lord, that God, it will be replaced by your peace. Lord, where there is difficulty, Lord, there will be hope. So, Lord, this morning, I pray. I pray for my brothers and sisters here today in this sanctuary. For our friends online, oh God, I pray for them this morning. I pray that the Christ of Christmas, the greatest gift of all, will fill our hearts. And it would be peace on earth, goodwill to man. So, God, we thank you and we praise you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we just stand this morning? Can we just stand this morning and give God praise? Can we just stand this morning? Just give God some praise this morning. Lift up your hands this morning and just give God some praise. Give him some praise. Give the birth. Give the baby. Give, give, give the greatest gift of all, uh, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Worship him this morning. Uh, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Uh, Lord, we magnify you. Uh, Lord, we glorify you. Lord, uh, we give you praise uh, and we give you thanks. Uh, Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, we come to adore you. Christ the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Hallelujah. You can be reseated at this time. Amen. Pastor Wendell is coming, and she's going to lead us on in a time of giving.